Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how DNA fingerprinting works, or at least how an older version of it worked. So shown here are two strands of DNA. Let's say we have two different subjects, you and me, that we want to compare. Well, we need to acknowledge two important things about DNA before we start our experiment. First is this. DNA is negatively charged. This is a result of the phosphoesters that join the sugar phosphate backbone together. You can see right here, they all carry negative charge. The next important thing to consider is that DNA is a very long sequence of just four base pair possibilities at each location. Now that might not sound like a lot of variability, only four possibilities, but when you consider this, only six possibilities leads to 4,096 possibilities. Seven base pairs in a row, there are 16,000 possibilities, and with eight base pairs in a row, the number jumps to over 65,000. So it's very rare to find a specific sequence of six to eight base pairs anywhere in your DNA or mine. So we use something called a restriction enzyme during a DNA fingerprint test. And the restriction enzyme is simply a protein which cuts DNA at a very specific sequence of about six to eight base pairs. Now here's the catch. Remember how rare those sequences were. They do occur in your DNA and mine, but they occur in different locations. So the restriction enzyme will find this sequence wherever it shows up in your DNA and mine and cut it no matter what. The result of this is that your DNA and mine will make fragments of different sizes. And those fragments are loaded onto what's known as a gel electrophoresis plate. Remember, DNA is negatively charged. So if we place an electrical potential across the plate, the DNA will be dragged through a thick viscous gel based upon its attraction to the positive charge at the other end. But when this happens, because the gel is so thick, the larger fragments move slower than the smaller ones do. And the consequence of this is that your DNA and mine will create fragments which arrive at different locations in the gel, causing the familiar bands that we see that are compared to one another in a DNA fingerprint analysis. This is how we accomplish identification based upon DNA. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com. YouTube channel Chem Survival. See you on the next video.